Hey, AP Statistics. So welcome to the second part of 10.3, where we're going to look at the significance test for mu diff. So we're dealing with matched pairs data. If effectively, this is just a one sample t-test with differences. Um, and so we can get through this pretty quick. Um, our null hypothesis, though, tends to be, and when, our, when we did our one sample t-test before, we'd have some mu equals some number that we were told. This one will very frequently be that there's no difference. And so often, you know, we can have a difference equals a hypothesized value. The vast majority of time, we'll be assuming that difference is zero. Our null hypothesis will be that that average difference for all those matched pairs is zero, and then we'll see if it's significantly greater than, less than, or not equal to zero. Conditions are uh, the exact same as the last section. So we got a random, we have paired data um, come from a random sample of population of interest or from a randomized experiment, 10%. Uh, our uh, number of differences, our number of pairs is less than 10% uh, of all potential differences. And then the population distribution of differences is either normal, uh, which we won't likely know, or the sample size is large, that would be ideal. And if not, we can graph our data and see if it looks, there's no skew or outliers. So then here's what our t-test statistic looks like. We have x bar difference. So we see our mean of our sample differences, see how far that is from zero, and then divide by our standard error there and get a t-test statistic. We ultimately calculate a p-value with the n minus one degrees of freedom. So let's jump right into an example. Researchers designed an experiment to study the effects of caffeine withdrawal. They recruited 11 volunteers who were diagnosed as being caffeine dependent to serve as subjects. Each subject was barred from coffee, colas, and other substances with caffeine for the duration of the experiment. During one two-day period, subjects took capsules containing their normal caffeine intake. During another two-day period, they took placebo capsules. Uh, the order in which the subjects took caffeine and placebo was randomized. So this is a randomized, but they're doing, uh, the individuals are getting both treatments. And so we're going to look at the differences between them. Uh, at the end of each two-day period, a test uh, for depression was given to all 11 subjects. Reachers wanted to know whether being deprived of caffeine would lead to an increase in depression. Uh, the table displays data on the subject's depression test scores. Higher scores show more symptoms of depression. So their depression score with caffeine and their depression, uh, and here's their depression scores with the placebo. And this is just one person. One person, they got two different depression scores. You know, this person, they were more depressed with the placebo. So was this person, you know, and we, we'll see that throughout, you know, it looks like mostly there's, you know, they felt the difference. So we'll see if we can find significant evidence of that. All right. So do the data give the convincing evidence at alpha 0.05? Um, and so we, and then ultimately we're going to draw this conclusion for subjects like the ones in this experiment. So we've got these like two lists of data, but the first, very first thing that we'll do is we'll turn those into differences and, and um, uh, kind of X bar for that. So our state step for this, uh, we're going to, our null hypothesis is that the, the difference is zero. And the alternative is that the difference is greater than zero. And they did placebo minus caffeine, say that placebo you know, uh, depression was higher for those individuals like this. So the true mean difference, placebo minus caffeine in depression test score for subjects like these. Um, so they actually was a significant level given of alpha 0.05, but you could make one up if you had to. Um, so that's what we'll do. Uh, and we're going to do, and you can also call this a paired t-test. So you can call this a one sample t-test for mu diff. You can call this a matched pairs t-test. That's you know, another thing people refer to it. Uh, same thing as people call the last one, like a matched pairs t-interval. Whatever, it's all the same thing. But I'll, I'll tend to just call it actually a one sample t-test for mu diff. Uh, the conditions, so they randomly assigned treatments. This was not necessarily a random sample, but we did randomly assign the treatments, uh, the order of the treatments really. Um, placebo then caffeine or caffeine then placebo to the subjects. Um, and then we don't have to check the 10% condition because this is an experiment. Um, so we just need to check the normality condition. And of course, we don't know that the population is normal. The sample size is small, so we graph the data and it looks pretty good. There's no major skew or outliers. So then our do, this is just like a one sample t test. So they calculated all those differences. So the first one would be 16 minus five. So that would have been 11. And the next one, 23 minus five would have been 18 and so on. Uh, you get those list of differences, um, average them, find the standard deviation of that group. And then uh, the number of differences, the number of individuals in the study was 11. Um, and so we'll use degrees of freedom of 10, 11 minus one. And so we get this t-test statistic. So x bar minus mu, which we're assuming is zero difference. 
uh, sample standard deviation over square root of sample size. You get that t-test statistic. That's a pretty big one. Uh, we'll do you know, t-cdf, lower bound, 3.53, up to you know, infinity or large number with 10 degrees of freedom, and you get that for a p-value, which is real small. So because that p-value is less than uh, our alpha level of, oh, well, no. Because our p-value is less than an alpha level of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. We have convincing evidence that caffeine withdrawal increases depression test score on average for subjects like the ones in this experiment. So we can establish a cause effect because they randomize the treatments and so on. That Yeah, it seems like if we kept everything else the same, it seems like the change in whether they actually got their caffeine or not is affecting their depression score. Um, so it uh, does, you know, Caffeine withdrawal does increase depression for this. So need to be actually be able to draw some of those cause-effect relationships from this. All right, so the last thing you need to decide is when should you do matched pairs and when do you not? So when do you do mu1 minus mu2 and when do you do mu diff? So two sample T procedures require data from independent random samples from two populations of interest or form two groups in a randomized experiment, whereas mu diff is for when you're dealing with matched pairs. Uh, paired T procedures require paired data that come from a random sample uh, from the population of interest or a randomized experiment. So make sure you kind of practice identifying which one you should do. Um, the proper inference method depends on how the data were produced. So if it was a matched pairs design, you diff. If it was uh, you know randomized, completely randomized experiment, then then that. If we're sampling from two different populations, two independent random samples, we go with this. If we're sampling and we're just looking at the, the individuals are grouped together, you know, like we're looking at like a husband and wife or something like that, and their two scores, like those data are paired. And so we should look at, uh, do the difference first, and then look at the, like the mean of the differences, rather than the difference between the means. Um, and so an example problem, uh, in each of the following uh, settings, decide whether you should use two sample T procedures to perform inference about a difference in means, or paired T procedures to perform inference about uh, a mean difference. Explain your choice. So I've got a couple of examples of these, and these can be you know, tricky to get used to. Uh, before exiting the water, scuba divers remove their fins. A maker of scuba equipment advertises a new style of fins that is supposed to be faster to remove. A consumer advocacy group suspects that the time to remove the new fins may be no different than the time required to move the old fins on average. Uh, 20 experienced scuba drivers are recruited to test the new fins. Each diver flips a coin to determine if they wear the new fin on the left foot and the old fin on the right foot, or vice versa. The time to remove each type of fin is recorded for every diver. So we just have 20 individuals doing it two different ways. Those data values are going to be paired because some people just might be faster than others, right? And even, the, you know, so we'd rather look at their individual difference. And so paired T procedures, the data come from two measurements from the same variable, in this case, time to remove the fin, for each diver. Right, another example here, uh, to study the health of aquatic life, scientists gathered a random sample of 60 white piranha fish from a tributary in the Amazon River during one year. The average length of these fish was compared to the random sample of 82 white piranha from the same tributary a decade ago. So even though it's the same tributary, the, the, the data aren't paired. In one individual fish value would have to go with another individual fish, and they don't. So uh, this is a two sample T procedures setting. Uh, the data come from independent random samples of white piranha in two different years. Uh, and the last one here, uh, can, we, can a wetsuit deter shark attacks? A researcher has designed a new wetsuit with color variations that are suspected to deter shark attacks. To test this idea, she fills out uh, two identical drums with bait and covers one in the standard black neoprene wetsuit and the other in the new wetsuit and the new suit. Uh, over the period of one week, she selects 16 two-hour time periods and randomly assigns eight of them uh, to the drum uh, in the black wetsuit and the other eight are assigned to the drum in the new suit. Uh, during each time period, the appropriate drum is submerged in waters uh, that sharks frequent and the number of times the sharks bite the drum was recorded. They're basically training sharks to attack wetsuits, which is great. Uh, so uh, in this case, because they randomized the eight and the other eight and they're not matched for any reason, uh, this is a two sample T procedures. The data come from two groups in a randomized experiment with each group consisting of eight time periods in which a drum with a specific wetsuit, standard or new, was randomly assigned to be submerged. Um, and so that would be uh, so yeah, two sample 
uh, T procedures. Uh, a lot of those we could change the experimental design to, 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 to make it the other case. So in this first one, rather than do this, we could just say, hey, U10 scuba divers, you use this type, U10 scuba divers use that other type, and we'll see which, you know, if there's a difference between those. All right? We're less likely to get significant results that way, but um, that would be a two sample T procedures instead of paired. Um, this one, we could have, you know, maybe figured out some way to make this paired. Um, uh, I don't know, it'd be really hard. I guess if you tagged the fish and you got their, their ones, like you've got the same fish both times, maybe you could do something like that. I don't know, that one would be hard to pair, pair fish together uh, from the sea. But um, this one, maybe we could put uh, two in at the same time, right? You put like, maybe you match, uh, put one wetsuit in, one with one wetsuit and one with the other wetsuit and see if they're more likely to go to one or the other. I don't know, you'd have to pair it in some way rather than just drop in these eight at their times and these eight their times. You'd have to group them together for some reason or put the same type of bait in, in a pair and something like that. Um, so that is matched pairs, uh, paired data, doing um, your confidence interval for um, the mean difference and the significance test for the mean difference.